Hello guys, Boogs here. Welcome to the next Armour Brief video. Thank you for your likes on the previous video and apologies for not having a poll up last week. All will be resumed this week though, so don't forget to check out our Discord after the video. This week I have another much loved vehicle, that is the M2A3 Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle. Now the Bradley's history is a strange and complex story. It is hilariously captured in the semi-serious comedy movie called Pentagon Wars and more deeply captured in the books with the same name. Unfortunately, I don't have time to cover it all, so we'll only be going into a very brief part of it. Now the Bradley was born from the need for an IFV, or just infantry fighting vehicle, that could serve in high intensity conflict under nuclear, biological and chemical warfare. The 1958 specifications called for an 8 ton vehicle with a 20mm autocannon and sealed firing ports. With the difference between this specification and the serving Bradley, we can see that a lot went on through the design process. The approval for production came in 1980, 22 years after the first specifications were written up. Its prototype name was XM2, with again X being the standard US prototype prefix. The name Bradley was then given to the vehicle in 1981 after the late World War II Army General Omar Bradley. During the 1991 Gulf War, the Bradley saw heavy fighting. In fact, by the end of the war, M2 Bradleys had destroyed more Iraqi armoured vehicles than M1 Abrams. Although, more Bradleys were themselves destroyed than Abrams, but with 17 of those 20 lost coming from friendly fire incidents. Lessons from the war found that the Bradley was vulnerable to IEDs and RPGs, oh, and friendly fire, but the protection was enough to reduce casualties and allow the crew to escape. To solve the friendly fire issue, the Bradleys were fitted with external IR beacons. By 2007, Bradleys had stopped being deployed in favour of the better protected but less armed MRAP. After a very long and rough development process, the M2A3 Bradley we see in squad today was produced with the following specifications. A main armament consisting of a 25mm Bushmaster chain gun, a 2x1 BGM-71 tow anti-tank guided missile launcher, a secondary armament of a 7.62mm coax machine gun and 6 firing ports for infantry. However, most of these firing ports are almost always covered with additional armour and seeing a deployed M2A3 with these uncovered is rare. They were never actually really used. The Bradley is powered by a Cummings 600 horsepower diesel engine that provides a maximum speed of 56 km an hour and an operational range of 400 km. Now we can discuss the in-game M2A3 and how it plays. You have three main roles in the Bradley, the driver, the gunner and the commander. As the driver in the Bradley, you have a similar environment to the other tracked infantry fighting vehicles. However, like the FV520, you have 2000 HP, not 3000 HP like in MBTs. The Bradley is a heavy and slow vehicle, with a maximum speed of only 56 km an hour. This means it is tricky to get anywhere fast, which means you have to think hard about the engagements you get yourself into and what your escape routes are. You may also have to make use of your engine smoke more often. If we now look at the armour on the Bradley, we see that from the front it's quite vulnerable on the lower glacis and manlet. As with the FV520, the yellow region is penetrable, but with reduced damage. From the front, Non-boxed areas are not penetrable, however, when looking at the side view, the non-boxed areas are penetrable by LATs and upwards, with a red box being the location of the ammo rack. As such, a driver must always attempt to orient armour at anything other than small arms, and, where possible, hide that lower glacis. Even though the armour on the front is somewhat weaker than the FV520, it still takes roughly 3 tank rounds of armour-piercing fin stabilised to destroy the Bradley. The gunner in the Bradley has a choice of three weapons. With the main 25mm chain gun, the gunner can choose between using AP or HE and can fire at a rate of 200 rounds per minute. You have 70 armour piercing and a lovely 250 high explosive at your disposal. Also you have a 7.62mm coaxial machine gun with two 800 round boxes and so you will need to reload this at some point. Let's not forget the two tow missiles 
which should be the first thing you use when engaging heavily armoured vehicles and other IFVs. Deploying the tow takes 5 seconds, and after firing it takes another roughly 2 seconds to fire the second tow. The gunner has a turret rotation speed of 8 seconds for a full 360 degrees. The turret for the Bradley is stabilised, as with most IFVs. Unlike the gunner and driver's seat, the commander in the Bradley does not need a crewman kit. This is an advantage over tanks, as the commander in the Bradley can then take either a hat, lat or a medic roll. Taking a hat or lat kit means the Bradley will have a much better chance of destroying tanks and other IFVs. Alternatively, the medic roll would allow the commander to revive crewmates that have died when repairing, or heal friendlies when they come to be transported or resupply with ammo. The camera in the Bradley's commander seat is stabilised and has a full 360 degree view. However, this can be partly obscured when the tow launcher is deployed. As an infantry fighting vehicle, the Bradley has the ability to carry seven members of a squad. Unless the Bradley is only crewed by two people, then the Bradley can carry eight squad members, since the commander does not need to have a crewman role. So in total, the Bradley can carry ten troops, with two being crewmen. This means that the Bradley could be taken by a full squad and used to closely support that squad, or if taken by a dedicated vehicle squad, then it can be used to ferry troops in and out of engagements. This makes the Bradley very versatile and support focused. While good at transporting troops though, it is not as well armoured as the FV-510 up armoured or the FV-520 CTAS, and so it is very vulnerable to lats. Along with this, it is a slow tracked vehicle. This means can it, it can be easily brought to a halt, which leaves any troops inside potentially trapped. The Bradley fits the IFV role very well. But with weak, relatively weak side armour and a slow speed, it is in no way the best IFV you can play. However, with the ability to fire toes, the Bradley is a very good anti-vehicle machine. It shouldn't be played too aggressively, and if you stray too far away from your team, it can be caught out very easily by pesky ATs. The Bradley is equally matched against the FV520 CTAS. The Bradley's cannon cannot penetrate most areas of the FV520. However, it can do a significant amount of damage with the tow. The BMP-2 is a similar in terms of firepower to the Bradders, but it has a weaker armour. However, the BMP-2 has, um, has many more, but slower reloading conquers ATGMs, and a faster firing 30mm autocannon. All this means that the Bradley is good in blue versus red layers, as well as this, it's 2000 HP means it takes roughly three non ammo rack shots from a tank to kill. Pair this with its high penetration tow, and you have a very good anti tank vehicle. And with that, we're finished. Thank you for watching, folks. Don't forget to like and subscribe, along with a comment with what you've thought. As mentioned, polls for the next Armor Reef will be resumed, so don't forget to check out our Discord so that you can vote. The link for that will be in the comments and the description down below. Cheers. Boogs out.